to this rally against NATO. I'm very pleased to welcome our first speaker, Bethan Jenkins, Assembly Member for the Wales Assembly, a long-standing peace and anti-war activist. Please welcome Bethan Jenkins. So it's an event we should not be proud of hosting uh, here in Wales. We have a strong tradition of peace and pacifism in Wales. That I am proud of uh, and that we should promote as opposed to promoting war. Far from providing security, since 1999 NATO has crept to envelop 12 states. Along with the IMF and WTO, NATO is part of that initial armory. It is the armed wing of the neoliberal economic consensus. Newport to discuss the 
close the cooperation between NATO and Ukraine. What for? To develop that so-called military effort, which is about fighting his own people, his own population in the southeast of his own country. And they are asking for more money. The money will not go into education, into housing, into health care. On the contrary, they already announced, for example, that they will stop supporting their own industry. There will be no subsidies for jobs. The money will only go into killing people, killing people in their own territory. And that is something which has to be stopped, not only in the Ukrainian territory, it has to be stopped here in the West. Because the Western public opinion must realize that a real disaster is going on. The real crime is being now done, accomplished. And we have to organize solidarity with people in southern and eastern Ukraine who are now repressed, bombed, killed, but who are resisting. And they're not resisting for Russia, and they're not resisting because many of them consider themselves Russians. But they're resisting because they want to decide by themselves how to live, and they want to fight for, what, for their welfare, for their rights, and for their future. So, from Iraq to Ukraine, NATO only causes pain. No to NATO, no to NATO expansion. Thank you. Thanks very much, Boris. Country and many different countries to say no to NATO. I think we have to relabel NATO. They're not the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. They're the Northern Arms Trade Organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all they are. Arabia. Who do they supply their arms to? They supply Qatar. Who do they supply their arms to? But they also supply Israel. They supply Israel in order to make it the fourth mightiest army in the world. And they can do that because the United States gives them three billion dollars every year to spend on American weapons. weapons is to hold the Palestinian people hostage and the Palestinian people have been hostage in their own land for 66 years now. We've just been witnessing the slaughter in Gaza and friends I know we know the figures more than 2,000 murdered, tens of thousands injured, hundreds of thousands made homeless truce today, but make no mistake about it. I don't want anybody to be under any illusions. The purpose of the Israeli state is to destroy the Palestinian people and to take, send them off the land and they've been doing this for 66 years. And while they're doing it, the same world leaders that are going to meet in Newport next weekend do nothing while they watch this slaughter and they agree with Israel's continuing expansionist Canadian policy in Gaza, the West Bank and East Jerusalem. But it's simply another installment because as I've said they've been doing this for 66 years. In 1948 in the spring and summer they destroyed 267 Palestinian villages and forced the people to become refugees in what is now the Gaza Strip and they've continued their projection to kill the refugees, to get rid of the Palestinians. In January 49 they bombed the food distribution centers in Khan Yunus and Deir al-Bala. In 1953 Ariel Sharon attacked Burej camp and they've gone on and on. And the language that they've used in their grotesque justifications, as if there could be any, has been the language of ethnic cleansing, the language of apartheid, the language of imperialism. What we've got 
to do from today is to say that actions like this have to be continued time after time after time. Yes, against NATO, but also against Israel. We must make Israel a pariah country. We must boycott Israeli goods. We must call for sanctions against Israel. We must end European taxpayers subsidizing Israel as we do all the time. The Palestine Solidarity Campaign is working tirelessly to this end. And on the 9th of September, we've got a national lobby of parliament. Be there, make the MPs and this shameful government put a stop to its support and complicity for Israel. It's us, the people, who can change history against NATO and against Israel. Free, free Palestine! much indeed, Betty. It's a real honour to welcome our next speaker. Margareta Darcy is an activist in Ireland at the Shannon Airport protesting against the illegal use of that airport for US war missions. She's straight from serving in prison uh, for being on the runway there to stop the planes. Please welcome Margareta Darcy. if we are serious about stopping NATO. This morning when we were flying out of Shannon, hundreds of American troops were going out to Europe to kill a man. I say to you, we can close Shannon down. Shannon is the entrance to Europe. We have thousands of American troops going through. We have drones going through. We have around the world at the moment, it looks more dangerous, more volatile and more violent than at any time since the Second World War. And our next speaker is the convener of the Stop the War Coalition, one of the founder members of Stop the War, Lindsay German. Give her a big round of applause. David Cameron said yesterday that there was an increased terror threat here in Britain. Some of us who've organised demonstrations for many years know that they say this very often when we have a big demonstration against a G8 summit or a NATO summit. But we should send a very clear message to Cameron today. If there is an increased terror threat in this country, there is only one group of people responsible for it, and that is the people who've taken us into illegal wars over the last 12, 13 years. It's the people who have destroyed the lives of millions in Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, and now they're trying to do it again in Iraq and in Ukraine. So when we say that we are going to demonstrate here, we're standing up not just for our right to protest, and the fun 
funding of ISIS from countries like Saudi Arabia, which are allies of the West. So they are, they are banging the drum for war, and we are here to say no to war. We don't want war in Iraq. We don't want war in Ukraine. We don't want war anywhere. And when they say to us, as they are going to do this week, that every NATO country has to increase its defence spending as a result of the supposed Russian threat, we should say, is this what people in Newport really need or anywhere else in this country? Do we really need more Police, do we really need more barricades? Do we really need more weapons of mass destruction, which are now killing thousands every week in the Middle East? Or do we need hospitals and schools and houses and all the other things that people don't have? So thank you everybody for coming today. Thank you for everything you've done. We have a whole week of protests that we want you to be part of. But remember, when they tell their about war and they are telling lies about war every day. It's the Russian threat, it's the ISIS threat, it's the Hamas threat, it's somebody's threat. No, it's their threat and they're the people that we have to oppose. Thank you very much. It's a huge honour for us to introduce the following unrelenting campaigner for peace. It's Councillor Ray Davis. Today I welcome you with all my heart because today you've rekindled uh, the fire in so many valleys right throughout Newport and right throughout Wales. So there is, there is a plus to the disgraceful fact that the First Minister of Wales and, and, and Newport Borough Council welcome NATO with open arms. And the plus is this, that it's given us the opportunity to tell, them, to tell the world and to tell the country and to tell NATO what we so we've think got of them. And so, and so last week, comments, last week we were here, we were here when NATO was on at the podium by there. And we stormed onto the, onto the podium and we told the people on that day what NATO was all about. And then we went down to the waterfront down there and there was tanks and there was guns and there was armoured cars and people were putting their children up onto the tanks etc. And I told them and I told the parents they're going to be fodder for the, uh, for the next war. And I said, well you've given your children sweets from Afghanistan and cakes from Libya and cakes from everywhere else. I said, NATO people are up in the Celtic Manor in Newport planning the next war. And I said, well, how is it going to be funded? It's going to be funded from your taxes. And I'm so very, very grateful, therefore, that we've had the opportunity. And now the, uh, the last thing I want to say, the last thing I want to say is this. A big thank you to the NATO NATO people who've been burning the midnight oil night after night uh, throughout since, since January. A big thank you to Mary Walsh, who, who, who organised the walk all through Wales. Can I tell you this? When the Romans come to Wales, we kick them out. When the Anglo-Saxons come to Wales, we kick them out. And when the uh, when the Normans to Wales kicked them out, because we were a peaceful, we were a, we were a peaceful people. Now one day, comrades and friends, one day, just one day, because of you and because of the power of the people, there's no bloody power in Parliament at all. You'll be going to an election now next year, but there's no power there in Parliament. The power is with you. And when those olive trees of peace burst over Palestine, burst over Gaza, burst over the Middle East, burst over the Ukraine, and burst over Newport, that will be the day when we'll celebrate a good future for our kids. Thank you, comrades. Free Palestine! much indeed Ray. I know we all celebrate the diversity of our movement and the unity of our movement. It's therefore a great pleasure to welcome Dean Ahmed from the Council of Mosques and Muslim Organisations in Newport. Welcome Dean. Ladies and gentlemen,
gentlemen, boys of Kennedy Bow. As a Newport Ownian, all of my life, I have never before felt like a stranger in my own city. But NATO has come into Newport, so we have miles of fencing erected, our schools are to be closed, our businesses disrupted, and our roads barricaded. It's reported that the cost of this two-day summit to be in the region of £50 million, which is, by the way, paid for by you and me. There's a lot to be said about our so-called democratically elected representatives and leaders who feel that they have to barricade themselves behind walls of steel in order to feel safe. If our leaders had not waged illegal, direct and proxy wars in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Libya, in Syria, in Gaza, and now are planning for new wars in Iran and Ukraine, and other parts of the world murdering and maiming millions and millions of innocent lives, radicalizing and feeding extremism throughout the world, perhaps their safety here in Newport would not be in question. Perhaps the wall of steel that they have erected to keep us all out need not have been erected. NATO is not a force for good. It's a tool used by our leaders to wage illegal wars in our name against innocent lives throughout the world for big business interests for themselves and for their cronies. Our governments are guilty of supplying weapons to terrorist states like the murderous Zionist occupier that is Israel. It is guilty of supplying weapons of mass destruction to their proxies throughout the world. It is guilty for planning and implementing the divide and conquer rule throughout the world with no cost of innocent lives of men, women and children taken into account. So as long as big business keeps making the money and keeps it rolling in, everything stays the same. Today we must say no to NATO, no to foreign sponsorship of state terror, no to direct intervention and no to new wars, no to supplying despotic governments with weapons of mass destruction and no to lying to us anymore about their true intentions. Our governments should only go to war in true self-defense. No to NATO is no to more war. Thank you. Thanks very much, Dean. Our next speaker comes from a NATO-free country, partly because of the efforts of his own party. He's a senator with Sinn Féin from Ireland. Give him a big round of applause to David Cullinan. Friends, I'm very, very pleased to be here at this uh, fantastic event where so many people from across the UK, and I know people are here from Ireland and different parts of Europe and the world, the protest against the unjust policies of NATO and the illegal wars which have been fought by NATO leaders and NATO uh, countries. I'm very proud of the fact that I come from Ireland which is NATO free, but I'm not proud of the fact that Shannon Airport in Ireland has been used by the US military over the last number of years to transport millions of American soldiers as, and using Shannon Airport as a staging post in their illegal wars in Afghanistan and in Iraq. It has brought shame on the Irish governments which have allowed that to happen. The vast, vast majority of Irish people, and I bring with me the solidarity of the vast majority of those Irish people, are against NATO's policies, are against those illegal wars. And like the people of Wales, the vast majority of citizens, in my view, across the world recognise that the real threat to world peace is not coming from Iran, is not coming from Syria, it's not coming from Afghanistan, it's not coming from Palestine. The real threat to world peace is hunger. The real threat to world peace is poverty. And the real threat to world peace is injustice. And as long as we have injustice, as long as we have poverty, 
and as long as we have occupation and imperialism, we're going to have resistance from people like yourselves. When NATO leaders are meeting over the next number of days here in Newport, will they be meeting to develop strategies to deal with poverty? Will they be meeting to develop strategies to deal with famine and hunger? No, they won't. They'll be telling us that the real threat is coming from Iran and Syria as they prepare for more new wars. So I'm proud of the fact that my party doesn't support NATO, it doesn't support these unjust wars, and we will continue to be part of that international effort to oppose uh, imperialism and to oppose those unjust wars. Thank you very much. mentality won't bring us security we have to set the world free from the war economy nato nato you got to go 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 don't discuss your war games here we don't want your war games here don't discuss your war games here we don't want your war games here I'm sure that singing woke us all up. So, speaking next from Public and Commercial Services Trade Union is Marianne Williams. Warm welcome. Owens, I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay, today, thousands of us have marched on Newport in the footsteps of the Chartists who marched on Newport to this square in 1839 demanding democracy. 22 of them were brutally murdered for the crime of demanding the vote by state forces in this square on this soil. Today we have marched against NATO. NATO would believe that the way to bring democracy is with bombing and warmongering and murdering. And I think it's fitting that we, the people, stand on this ground in this square to make our voices heard to those world leaders. You only need to look around the streetport, streets of Newport and Cardiff in the last few days to see what their democracy actually looks like. Metal fences, checkpoints, armed state forces and seven battleships in Cardiff Bay to protect 60 world leaders from the people that they themselves represent. And I think is as relevant here today as it was 150 years ago. This government talk of our colonies, they lie the vagabonds. We have no colonies. Our aristocracy, our merchants possess colonies all over the world. But the people, the real veritable people, do not possess a sod of ground in their own country, much less the colonies. What are called colonies belong to the, the, the elite, to, to our oppressors, to our enslavers. What we must do is rise internationally against our oppressors and our enslavers. We must say no to NATO, no to war and no to austerity. We have a will to win, comrades. Thank you. Yeah.